Good morning students. Today we will see about the exchange transfusion which you have already detailed, studied in detail in your third year curriculum. But as a part of OBG, Obstetrics and Gynecology curriculum, you have the exchange transfusion. So we will just have a re review of what is exchange transfusion. An exchange transfusion involves removing of patient blood and replacing with donor blood in order to remove the abnormal blood components and circulating toxins while maintaining adequate circulating blood volume. It is primarily performed to remove antibodies and excess bilirubin in, in isoimmune disease. The incidence of exchange transfusion is decreasing secondary to the its prevention and improved prenatal management of all immune hemolytic disease and improvements in the management of neonatal hyperbilirubinemia. Indications. First indication is allo immune hemolytic disease of the neumon. Remove circulating bilirubin to reduce the levels to prevent chronic thrust. Replace antibody cutted red blood cells with antigen negative red cells. Severe hyperbilirubinemia, secondary to alloimmune hemolytic disease of the newborn, is the most common reason for the exchange transfusion in the neonatal intensive care unit. Second indication is significant unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia with a risk of chronic thrust. I hope you all know what is chronic thrust. It is an irreversible brain damage when the serum bilirubin crosses the blood brain barrier. Due to any cause when intensive phototherapy is unsuccessful. Severe anemia, where there is normal or increased circulating blood volume. Antibodies in the maternal autoimmune disease. Polycythemia, to reduce hematocrite, usually accomplished with partial exchange transmission using normacillin replacement. Severe disturbance of blood chemistry. These are the indications of Exchange transfusion. A total serum bilirubin level at or above the exchange transfusion level should be considered a medical emergency and an intensive phototherapy with multiple lights should be commenced immediately. The consultant neonatologist on service should be contacted without delay. Levels in the first 24 hours are less certain due to wide range of clinical circumstances and a range of response to phototherapy. Immediate exchange transfusion is recommended in infants showing signs of acute bilirubin encephalopathy or total serum bilirubin more than 85 micromole per liter above this level. Risk factors include alloimmune hemolytic disease, G6PD deficiency, asphyxia, significant lethargy, temperature instability, sepsis and acidosis. Use of total serum bilirubin. If the total serum bilirubin does not increase, decrease or continues to rise despite of intensive phototherapy treatment, this suggests the presence of hemolysis. The final decision to perform an exchange transmission will be made by the consultant neonatologist on service and will be based on the above guidelines as well as the following. The trend of serum bilirubin levels and response to treatment, clinical presentation of infant that means the signs of bilirubin encephalopathy, underlying condition, previous treatment and referring hospital if applicable. Blood volumes which use for the exchange transfusion. The volume of blood for exchange transfusion is calculated using an estimate of neonate circulating blood volume. That means in term infants it is 80 ml per kg and preterm infants it is nearly 100 ml per kg. Double volume exchange transfusion most commonly used for the removal of bilirubin and antibodies to induce circulating blood volume. For example, if the term weight infant weight is 2 kg, 2 into 80 is equal to 160 ml per kg. Replace approximately 85% of the blood volume. This will cause an approximate reduction of 50% of pre exchange bilirubin level, but can be expected to rebound 4 hours post transfusion to approximately two thirds of pre exchange level. Single volume exchange transfusion means 1 into circulating blood volume, for example, for a term infant of 8 ml per kg. Replaces approximately 60% of the blood volume. Consider when the etiology is not hemolytic disease of the newborn. Partial exchange transfusion for polycythemia using normacillin when desired hemocrite following exchange transfusion is 0.55. The volume of exchange in ml can be calculated as follows. Actual hematocrite is minus desired hematocrite into infant's blood volume in milli milliliter divided by actual hematocrite. 
the blood products which used in the exchange transfusion. Ensure appropriate samples for pre-transfusion testing sent to the as blood bank as possible. Notify blood bank via telephone as soon as possible after the decision is made to exchange transfusion. Order appropriate volume of blood for the exchange. Order fresh frozen plasma for transfusion midway through and at the completion of exchange. Appropriate red cells for exchange will be provided by the blood bank. Blood for the exchange transfusion should meet the following criteria. Have non-hematophyte of 0.5 to 0.6. Appropriate group based on the infant and maternal blood group and antibodies. Negative for the antigen determined by the maternal antibodies. Leukocyte depleted, irradiated and used within 24 hours of irradiation. Cytomegalovirus negative as far as, as fresh as possible. Ensure at least less than 5 days old. Complications. The most commonly reported adverse events during or soon after exchange transfusion include catheter related complications like air embolism, thrombosis, hemorrhage, hemodynamic related to excess removal of injection of blood in the hypo or hypertension, intraventricular hemorrhage, hyper or hypoglycemia, hypocalcemia, hyperkalemia, acidemia. Potential complications related to the exchange transfusion include apneas, bradycardia, neutropenia, dilutional coagulopathy, feed intolerance, necrotizing, enterocolitis, septicemia, blood borne infections, hypo or hyperthermia. Preparation of the infant. Medical staff should discuss the procedure with the parents or the guardian and to obtain a consent. Advised consent to neontologist on duty as soon as the decision to exchange is made. Exclusively allocate at least one doctor and one nurse to care the infant throughout the procedure. When the exchange transfusion is taking place, consult a neontologist on duty should be present on the unit to provide support and to troubleshoot issues so that the fellow, regist fellow or registrar can carry out the procedure without interruption. Ensure resuscitation equipment and medications are easily accessible. Nurse the infant under radiant warmer for accessibility. Ensure the infant is comfortable and settled. Sedation and pain relief are more not usually required unless the infant is active and likely to compromise the line stability or sterile field. Ensure full ca cardio respiratory monitoring is initiated and document full set of baseline observations like temperature, respiratory and heart rate, blood pressure, oxygenation. The infant should be on nilper oral as soon as the decision is made to perform the exchange transfusion. Pass an oral or nasogastric tube and aspirate stomach content, leave the tube in situ and on free drainage for the duration of procedure. Before commencing the exchange transfusion, collect blood samples for required baseline bloods and any specific testing required. The testing good but not limited to blood cultures, blood gas, serum bilirubin, blood glucose, FBS. UEC, LFT, newborn screening test, hematological, chromosomal and metabolic studies. Establish a vascular access for the procedure if not already in situ, depending on whether the procedure will be performed via arterial or venous access via single venous access. The exchange transmission should be performed slowly over approximately 2 hours to avoid major fluctuations in blood pressure. I anticipate the need for increased oxygen requirement during the procedure. Set the blood warmer into 41 degrees Celsius. The blood warming extension set should be threaded on the blood warming coil while it is not prime. Use a septic technique. Connect the blood administration set to the blood warming coil and clamp off the lines. Insert administration set spike into the bag of red blood cells. Release the clamp and prime the coil. Technique. Two medical officers will perform the exchange transfusion using the arterial or venous two line. Technique. One whom is experienced in the procedure. A registered nurse may assist an experienced medical officer if second medical officer is unavailable. One medical officer may perform the exchange transfusion using venous one line technique. A second medical officer or experienced registered nurse should be available to assist as required. Small amount of blood exchange at a slower rate are usually better tolerated by infants with cardiovascular instability. As a guide, the time for each in and out should be around 5 to 10 minutes. In and out amount of blood are repeated sequentially until desired volume of exchange is reached. The in and out amount of blood should be called out so that the nurse recording the procedure can keep an accurately. 
registered nurse should observe the infants throughout the exchange transfusion record following an exchange transfusion record sheet. The volume of blood withdrawn and injected at the end of each cycle. Infant temperature, heart rate, respiratory rate, blood pressure, oxygen requirement, oxygen saturations, blood warmer temperature, general condition of the infant in every 15 minutes. Phototherapy lights remain on during the procedure. They should be turned off frequently to assess the infant color and general condition. Observe the infant for clinical signs of complication of exit transfusion. Administration of medication is required. Routine observation should continue to be recorded on the NIC observation chart each hour as per the standard procedure. After each 100 ml of blood exchange, flush the line with 0.5, 10% sodium chloride, administer 1 ml of 10% calcium gluconide. Diluted in 1 ml of water for injection by slow push followed by 0.5% sodium chloride flush. The calcium gluconate should not come in direct contact with donor red cells or clotting may occur. Monitor the changes in the heart rate and rhythm during the calcium gluconate administration. The last withdrawal volume should be saved for the post exchange blood test. Cease the exchange transmission if the infant condition suddenly de deteriorates. If the exchange transfusion ceases for any reason, always leave the infant blood volume in balance. Sudden deterioration in infant condition may relate to the procedure, underlying condition or an adverse reaction to transfusion. The transfusion adverse reaction should report should be made. Post procedure care of the infant, continuously monitor the vital signs and record 30 minutes for the first 4 hours post procedure. If stable, after this time, routine observations as per an NAC observation chart should be continued. Perform blood, blood glucose levels immediately post procedure and then hourly until stable. Measure the serum bilirubin 1 hour post exchange and repeat 6 hourly. Continue phototherapy until bilirubin levels are within acceptable range. Anticipate rebound increase in the serum bilirubin 2 to 4 hours post procedure. Observe catheter site for any signs of bleeding and exchange transfusion carries potential risk of necrotizing endocolitis, especially to a preterm infant. So monitor the appearance of abdomen and presence of bowel sound. Observe for signs of feed intolerance when the feeding is recommended. Measure urine electrolytes, full blood examination, hematocrite and blood gas on regular basis until the infant is stable. The medical officer performing the exchange transfusion should document the procedure in the progress note. Thank you. Thank you for listening. If you have any comment or suggestions, please let me know.